17, 2024. <laughs> Welcome to. I don't know how we're gonna call it. We'll call it Just... Scott and Toots. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll call it Scoots. Scoots. <laughs> BS Scoots and Toots show. <laughs> Scoots and Toots. Scoots and Toots. <laughs> Scoots and toots. I like scoots and toots. I like scoots. Scoots. Scots. Scots. Scoots. That's a lot of S's. But that would mean that my name is not a Scott then. No, I am a Scott too. So I don't know how. My last name is not toots. You mean you are toots. You are the toots. No, I'm not The tootser. Toots, tootser. You are toots. Okay, well, uh, we'll figure that out. Mm-hmm. We well, will figure that out. First. So, today was fasting day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did eat some tacos a while ago, but well, that was after the day day of fast during the day. Right. It was nice. You fasted till three. My stomach didn't growl one time, although I felt a little fatigued, but my stomach didn't growl. Good. Mine did. When did grow? So when I called you this morning, <laughs> when I called you this morning to confirm that we're gonna uh, fast, I was on my way to get me a coffee. <laughs> I was gonna go to Powwow, so yeah, hey, let me go grab me a coffee before I go in there. I was like, ooh, I forgot we got a fa- we, uh, we talked about fasting. So when I called you, I was literally in front of Kroger, Kroger which they have good coffee. The Starbucks in there is good. Uh, so, but anyways, so that was really great to kind of catch that up and changing my mindset on okay, I'm not gonna have breakfast, you know, we're fasting, and this is the second time we fasted together, right? Uh, together, yes. Uh, what the last time we were talking about it, we did it for a week, so a week of fasting we? that time, yeah. Well, during Sasha's chemo, mm-hmm. we did a week of fasting, and um, yeah, you know, intermittent fasting several times, but together, yeah, mm-hmm. prayer and fasting, yeah, mm-hmm. felt really connected. Had a good prayer this morning. You did the yeah. encounter with the Holy Spirit this morning at the gas station. Yeah, uh, that was amazing. Tell me right. about it again. So, leaving out of here, going to the gas station, just going to get a Red Bull. No intention to get fuel. Saw the fuel sign. The price was 252 or 256 257 something like that. Cheapest it's been in <laughs> two years. Mm, I mean, three years. it's been a while. So, uh, went ahead and pulled up, made the loop, little S bend, go around, make the bend, and then the pump that I was going to pull up to, there was no cars next to it, and it was bagged and tagged, so out of order. So I had to go one closest to me, and it was right next to a van. That's why I wasn't going to go to that spot. There was one right next to it. So I pulled in, like, okay, get out. Scan car, go, getting ready, everything. I'm in there getting fuel. Looking around, daydreaming, whatever, and I hear a guy. said, hey, boss. <laughs> and uh, like that guy's it has got to be pointed at me. I can hear it. The voice just traveled right at me, so I know the person was looking directly at me when they said it. So I turned and looked over, and the guy was in that van in the driver's seat, leaning forward and looked over and he was holding a plastic package that had a new still packaged electronic in it you could tell it was electronic and he said do you want to do you would you like to have this clip light is what he called it and i looked at it i kind of studied it for a second and then I was, I told him, no, nah, man, I'm, I'm good. Appreciate it, though. And then I turned away, and then, it, I don't know, something sat in me, right? And I was thinking about it. 
about the light, blah, 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 right? And then I turned back and looked over there and looked at the gas pump. I had something inside of me telling me to double check, right? Not to just leave it alone. So, you get, Spirit. yeah, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely the Holy Spirit. And I thought, oh, God's telling me something. And then I had that fight inside of me that was mm -hmm. like, nah, I mean, he's all good. Mind your own business. Get in your car. You're fixing to be done. Go get your Red Bull. Have a good morning. <laughs> Bye. You know, and I could picture myself driving down the road on my way to work, not knowing what was going on with this dude. So, I finished pumping, finished doing what I was doing, and. I was like, I'm going to listen to the Holy Spirit and just walked right over there. His window, the passenger window was still down. And I just went into the vehicle through the window, just casually, like me and this dude have known each other our whole lives. Just leaned into his vehicle and <laughs> with like arms on there, totally relaxed, <laughs> like, hey, man, how's it going? And I told the dude, said, what you got going on, man? Just like that. Just casual, tried to be cool. Let him know I, mm -hmm. so I can tell something's up. And he was kind of hunched over, you know, and in a, in a very sad posture, like uh, kind of given up kind of a posture. And I've been there, totally related to the guy. You know, decent looking dude. It wasn't like he was some so just totally homeless guy or anything like that. And so I mean, there wasn't anything scary about going and dealing with the guy. I just... He was humble, and he looked up at me and said, Man, I'm just trying to make it to work. I work in in Fort Worth, all the way in Fort Worth. I just need to make it to Fort Worth to work and back home. Mm. I'm trying to figure it out. So I just, boom, that was all I needed to hear because I've been in that situation at that gas station, not knowing if I'm going to be able to get back home once I get to work. Mm. And that's a tough feeling. It's very, very humbling. And it's also kind of makes you feel like, what am I doing? Like, I need to fix me, right, in that situation. Like, I can't, can't be doing this. Anyway, so long story short for that, I just reached into my back pocket, pulled out my wallet, and I knew I had that cash that <laughs> I was going to give to you, right? And I was like, oh, I'm glad I didn't give this to her, right? And I pulled out a 20 and just handed it to him. And you could tell he was a little caught off guard by it a little bit, but he wasn't going to turn it down. Mm -hmm. And I was glad for that because it made it made that easy for him, right? Because it didn't have to be weird. Mm -hmm. just, he took the money. He understood he needed it, and he had to have it. Mm -hmm. So it was just a nice deal. It's like, oh, man, thanks. And I was like, hey, man, I stopped for a second, and I looked at him, I, I reached out my hand, mm. shook his hand, said, hey, man, God bless you. Mm. And, mm. you know, he didn't say that specific thing back, but he said, man, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And he got up, it was, it was like watching Andrew <laughs> getting a new Pokemon card or something, you know, and he ran, he, he got out of the car, and he got out, and was kind of hustling, and and moving around real quick and he went to go head in with the cash to go pay for the fuel to go prepay and he stopped and realized that he needed to know which pump he was at and made that whole look and routine like we've all done and went inside and i saw him go in and he held the door for somebody that was a mile away from the door when he was when he went in you know like he couldn't wait to give back right and so that just that even that little small gesture right there was enough for me and but the the kicker is knowing, knowing for sure that you obeyed God, right? And seeing those plans unfold mm -hmm. after, right? Because, I mean, in the moment, I'm not thinking about the gas pump and why I pulled there and all this stuff. And I didn't make all that up to make it sound like it's some bigger than it was deal. But you can't help but see those things and how they aligned, and those little choices that you were going to make differently and you know that you were going to make them differently, but you chose to make that choice mm -hmm. off of a whim or off of the Holy Spirit's mm -hmm. guidance or whatever it is. But uh, that's, um, it's amazing. It's amazing to 
to do that and know that you're helping somebody else, even if it's a small, it's just a $20 bill. But for for me in a moment like that, I know that $20 bill would have meant so much more than a $20 bill. Mm. Right. And, uh, I mean, I can't even... I think about, you say it's a choice, right? It is a choice that you have to make to turn to that pump. It is a choice that you have to make to, oh, you know, let me stop here and do mm-hmm. this. And But those opportunities are provided by God, right? So, yes, it's, it's a difference between God has laid all these things out for us, giving us the Holy Spirit to guide us, but it's still up to us to make those choices and to be in obedience with what he's trying to do through us. Kind of reminded me of a conversation that I had this evening with one, well, several of my classmates. One of them asked, <laughs> said, so do you guys think that like, w- there are things that we were not supposed to know? So he was giving an example, like a gynecologist, how they how the field of gynecologist started. Um, so how they the person who who would take the doctor would take a woman and just really like op- you know, operate on them without medication without anesthesia and he was asking is this something that we we're probably not never supposed to know right and we were kind of chiming in everybody but you know something that kept coming to our mind is there are things that happen that it, they look harmful they look horrible you know and just really sad but those are the things that we need to move on f- to the next day, right? So, hmm. like, the, the guy, the doctor who got, you know, who was operating on these women, if he didn't do all that, these women, if he didn't do any of that, we would not have the field of, of gynecology right now, right? Hmm. Or a lot of medical advances came from the wars, right? Because oh, there were yeah, a lot of war point. thing, war really casualties, point. right? That so uh, there are you like that doctor could have chosen to to do something different, right? To operate on these women differently. The war would have you know people would have chosen to do something more positive. But at the end of the day, does God redeem it? Yes, you know because, and my contribution to the conversation is. The world, sin has entered the world, so we can't go away from that. But there is always a saving grace, and the saving grace is with with you, it's within me. The saving grace is with anybody that has known Jesus, right? So the guy at the gas pump, sin has entered this world, so he's living paycheck by paycheck. He's, you know, struggling to get to work Mm -hmm. just like we've been, right? Yeah. But there is a saving grace within you. There's a saving grace within me. There is God is working within all of us to bring the fulfillment of His love to, to His people, and it's it's amazing to watch, right? That sometimes, yeah, comes through negative things. But anyways, I mean that's what makes it saving grace. I right. Mean, that's what makes it grace at all. Because if if it was heaven on earth, then we wouldn't need the grace. Exactly. Right? Jesus, the yeah. choice. We need grace on our choices. Mm-hmm. You know, we have choice. You know, just like Adam and Eve. Yeah. The, you know, the first sin, the ultimate sin. Mm-hmm. It's a choice, you know. The Jesus grace Christ. was there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the grace was there with, with Adam and Eve and the forbidden fruit. It was there because if, God didn't provide the saving grace, then he it would have been over then probably, right? I mean, yeah. he could have just said, you know, punishment, eternal sin, blah blah blah. That's it, right? You know, so. But that would have defeat been that would have defeated his the purpose of creating us, right? To hmm. be in fellowship with him, you know. Um, so we, then he found the best solution, you know. But the, the fact is that sin had entered the world and. It was no longer how he intended it to be, but he still always, and that is something that we need to always see that if he saw a way to redeem the world, then, like when 
they com- Adam and Eve committed the war scene. I feel like he's always going to find a way to redeem our scenes, right? So that's good. That's amazing. Right, and that's the the hardest part is knowing every day that we'll need that grace every day until the end and knowing on top of that that the whole point of that is it's it will get worse in the world before the ultimate gets better before the ultimate better Mm -hmm. right i mean Mm -hmm. it's going to it's going to come to armageddon it's going to come to you know the the kings and the sin and everything that comes with the end, which is you know, the devil ruling what's here on earth and people turning themselves over and turning away from Jesus purposefully, knowing Jesus exists and turning away from him because of fear in judgment, knowing that he gives grace freely but still choosing the opposite. Yeah. We have to get to that point before existence can go to heaven, before everything comes to an end. Like That's the ultimate point is for God to show every soul, every being that he is the way even if they deny him they know he is yeah. they just choose to walk away yeah and so in the in that same kind of conversation i was reminded of what uh, the the reflection i did today on the word of god which was in i believe one tim one timothy 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 First Timothy. First Timothy, um, four, I believe, where it talks about you know, that God has not given us the spirit of fear, no. but of power and self control, and that's something I shared with you. You did you shared <laughs> it. I love fries, and I was gonna go <laughs> eat with Andrew, and I was taking him fries. That was yeah. Tell me about Lord. that. So I went to um, to Andrew's school, and I prayed that specific you know verse you know God has not given me a spirit of fear he's you know I have self control and power anyway so I went into school and we were eating but come to find out that he was offered an opportunity today to say the, the pledge of allegiance and he got nervous he got nervous the pledge of allegiance he got, nervous. Did, he got nervous so he, he turned it down hmm. So the teacher, the music teacher, came to me and said, oh, he was telling him, did you get nervous this morning? And and we said, yeah. Anyway, so we sat down and I was reminding him that he does not have a spirit of fear, that God has given him power and self-control. But in perfect. that, right, and that was the perfect, for me, yeah. it felt like it was a perfect opportunity for me to, t- to bring it to his attention because he was nervous. That's something we've kind of been talking about, you know, about the sensitivity to a lot of things and so that's the my prayer for him in this season but so that was the second time that verse had come to my to my fourth front i guess the in the day so when i got home i started reading the whole chapter because i wanted to understand like wh- why does he say power you know <laughs> instead of so mm-hmm. he has not given you a spirit of fear so i understand he's given you a spirit of self-control and for me i guess self-control and fear kind of go hand in hand right but power on the other hand it feels like it's kind of misplaced anyway so i wanted to read the whole chapter right and come to find out that paul is writing to timothy right who he mentions say my son timothy i, I don't know if he's meaning like biological son because he talks about his mom timothy's mom and timothy's grandma but he doesn't talk about timothy's dad so, but he refers to himself you know to timothy as my son right so i don't know if paul was his his biological yes it's dad. his it's his father that was the writer 
So Paul is writing that letter. Right, and I think to Timothy. That's, right, I think this time he's he's probably in jail because he says, or oh, he's in a different town. So well, he was imprisoned in Rome, right? No, I might be wrong about that. And so then I'm reading about this, and he's telling Timothy that, you know, basically he needs to be strong, right? He's saying, I see the faith that was in your mother and your grandmother in you, you know. Um, like, there is work that God has given us that we need to finish, right? So he tells him, because there is that work that God has given us, and he knows that that work is hard, God has not given you the spirit of fear, which they call it timidity, you know, of being hmm. timid, right? But he has given you a spirit of power and self-control. Then I not read them. not uh, Timothy's Timothy. Yeah. <laughs> Timothy's <laughs> Timothy. <laughs> uh, but that made a lot of sense to me in in the context of the reason work to do, right? So in us, that's what I was telling my classmates that in us there is a lot of work to do as you know, aspiring psychologists, aspiring mental health and whoever there is work in us that's not going to be easy work. That's going to have a lot of opposition. That's going to have a lot of doubts and political position, poli- you know, all those nuisances. Right. But as Paul was encouraging Timothy to uh, come on, you know, you're not going to, because it, it sounded like Timothy was kind of afraid to join his dad in the mission. So he's, Paul is telling him, tell so-and-so, bring me the, the scroll, bring me all these things, you know. Give him a task. So right, can, giving him tasks. So, and then come yeah, here, come yeah. here because we have work to you do. You forget about all the little nuances and your fears when you know you have, okay, I just need to get point A to point B, get you this, mm-hmm. right, and then I'm not thinking about fear of something else. Right, yeah. he's encouraging Smart. him not to, to give in to his fear, right? So mm. I feel like that's something, especially in my field, that we need to really pay attention to because there, there is work that we have to do to combat the spirit that has, of sin that's in a form of mental illnesses, that you know, mental disorders. So Or labeling of kids with instead of focus exactly. on Helping them and giving them the skills to help themselves in those kind of situations. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. And it could be a mental, even in kids, it could be a mental disorder. could be, yeah, but that's, like that nowadays especially, it's go to this, label them with that. Just like, you know, even when I was growing up, remembering people getting labeled with um, ADD. Okay, well, we're going to give you this medicine, blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, I can remember parents Mm -hmm. especially dads or friends dads saying that they had the the pill for it and it was get your butt outside and Mm -hmm. and go dig a hole right Right. get rid of the energy that causes it and that's you know maybe that exact thing wasn't the wasn't the fix for that but in a lot of circumstances like we were talking about yesterday you get those kids up and out of that chair and take them out Give them something to do, right? It's not ADD. It's, you know, every kid wants to be up and moving when they're that age, mm-hmm. right? I'm just, you, you know, the label, it's it's first to go to nowadays instead of seeing it as just a small learning task to get done. Yeah. So, I mean... All that just kind of made a turn around for me as far as that verse went, right? But then now, sitting here talking about this, remembering what I was praying about, and as I was, you know, kind of sharing with you, asking God to um, give me the confirmation about Thursday, and, you know, was right. with the doctor right. and stuff, stuff like that. So... Then coming, this was like a 360 to come back to the fear, right? God has not given you a spirit of fear. Bring another child in the world. It is a, it is like, like, I don't know, especially the world we live in now. 
maybe you know even our parents say that when they were having us but it's more it's no longer it's not something i can control once you know we bring someone in the world you know now it's 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 hard work to get them to right, follow Christ. Right. And you made that choice. Right. Now, so, he, he can mm-hmm. help along with it, but at, after it's all said, you got to do the work. Yeah, you got to yeah. do the work. And you got to do the work that's not easy. You know, we've seen it. Being a parent is not easy. But, you know, even being a kid in this world is no longer easy, right? So, oh, yeah. But all that we are still in alignment with what God wants to do because that is the purpose of us being created is to procreate and continue the world. So I feel like even with the, the that fear that I would say that we kind of have that's kind of lingering there, I feel like Paul went to all those places afraid, right? But he knew that just being afraid is not the spirit he has. That's not a spirit he has in him as an identity. He has power and self-control. That's what God has given him. Fear is brought on by the devil, trying to limit you from doing the purpose that God created you for, right? And that's, again, that on my end, as far as my fears, confirming that, okay, that's the fear is not me for me. That's not my identity, right? I have power, I have self control, and I can do, I can help God with creation without feeling like, you know, the, the you know, dreading fear. But also for Andrew, like God has not given you a spirit of fear. You know, you don't have to live in fear. That's not who you are. You know, fear is just something that comes and attacks you, but you have power and self control. So, right, the same way that. The same way that God is our Father, and He He leads us to keep us from the anxiety part of the fear, mm-hmm. or anxiety and fear. That's the way that it also falls on us, and maybe more so me to help to help with him or parents with a child, let's just say that, to to be their guide, because that's our role, to to give them a a guide to keep them from the fear. It's it reminds me of last was it last week or the week before and I fasted for several days. And during that, you know, we had the stress going on with the Jeep and all that, right? And the the thinking about it constantly. And right. I remember being super, super productive those days, right? I mean, I was praying constantly, and I was researching, and I was reaching out, and I was trying to figure it out. But in every step, there was prayer. And while we, while I was doing that, all together, I was still being super productive at work, getting jobs done. And that was, that's it right there. That's me knowing that if I put one foot in front of the other and I continue to bloom where I'm planted mm-hmm. and know that you're going to get that answer soon, Right, it's gonna it'll be soon, and to while you're in the waiting, to be thankful mm-hmm. in prayer, and still focus on someone other than yourself. Mm. Still be helpful to Robert. Well, you know, in a whether it's lending an ear for talking about his dad, you know, asking. Uh, an inquiring question to somebody to let you know that you think about them, right? And it's, you know, all of those things combined, like, on a daily basis. Like, anyways, that's the that's the guide, though. Mm. The work, putting in that work, and know that 
those steps are there to move forward while you're in the waiting, while you're facing the fear. You're not thinking as much about that fear, about that anxiety while doing that. Right, and that's the guide. That's the guide that he gave to Timothy. Do this, bring that, do this, and bring that. And right, mm-hmm. so go to this person. They were very helpful to me when I was um, in need. Uh, at one point, he's like, "This person, do not even do anything." <laughs> like they were not there for me when I needed them. I'm not wishing them wrong, but God is going to get them. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, it's funny. Uh, so, but another lesson I learned today, um, you listen to the video that I sent you, is daring to What's ask. What's her name? Uh, Priscilla Shara. Pris- Priscilla, yeah. Mm-hmm. Daring to ask God for a confirmation for for a decision, right? So you went back to when we got the jeep. And you thought you heard that that was the right thing to do, right? But she said something that really brought my attention to that specific incident. She said, God is so great that when you think you've heard from him, and that's not the first time I've heard this too, you you think you've heard from him, and but, you know, because we, we are very fallible, right? We are human beings with our little brains, we sometimes we think, yeah, that's it, you know, and it's not. But he's there to catch you, anyways. In his grace and his goodness and his love, he's there to catch you. And so, what is that thing that continues to make him catch us, even even when we fail to recognize him, that that was not him? You know, Three like strikes that. and you're <laughs> out of the no. old ball game. Yeah, no, it's yeah, not. Yeah. So he he always catches us. And and I think that's part of being vulnerable and saying I can't depend on my own, right? But you gotta move and make the step. But I can't depend on myself. But I gotta move and make right, the step. Right, right. So and like, that that part feels contradictive, right? At first, mm-hmm. until you like even she said until it happens to you or you 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 witness that. Mm-hmm. Several that, times, and yeah. that, and that, and it just you—you you, you can't deny it after that. So then you're you're more susceptible, or you're mm-hmm. more inclined to to give into mm-hmm. it after one or two times, and, and be and confident. Yeah, and confident, and mm-hmm. and that's it. Like, and wouldn't trade that for anything. Yeah, be confident in the fact that okay, I prayed about this. I'm not doing it for. Uh, reasons that are unworthy because again checking ourselves to say okay am i doing this because of pride am i doing this because there's other things that i want to like the flesh the fleshly desires oh yeah that's on the checklist on everything Mm. so if you've prayed about it and you feel like that's the right thing to do because you gotta make the step right you can live in fear of making the decision or if what if it's wrong but that's fear right if it's right right Again, so the daring to ask God for confirmation. I've always thought, okay, if I ask God for confirmation, is that doubting Him? Is that wanting the signs? Like Jesus said, you, this generation always looking for signs. When is, is God going to come? But that's not the same thing. Mm, that's, that's not the same thing. That's talking about right. Right. the end of the world. Visual sign or, or audible sign. Of the end of the world. Uh, yeah, that's so what the, the reference matters. is. Correct. Right. Correct, correct. So yeah, for, context does matter. Right. So for me asking, God, show me, confirm for me that this is a right decision that we're going to make. That is not a bad thing. And uh, That's the wrestle why. with God, though. I mean, he... That's what... That's what creates a better relationship with God, and in my opinion. Yeah, and he's saying, if you lack wisdom, ask for ask it. Ask for and it. Shall ask for it. it right. right. So, you're going to get the good answers, the mm-hmm. bad answers. You're going to be mad about the bad answers or the good answers, and not realize it's good. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. just our discernment versus his discernment. So, questioning God, I don't know. It's not. It's not as simple as that. It just sounds terrible. Is it questioning God or is it asking, like, 
confirm for me like you you say this actually you've said it a couple of times like for example when we're moving here you like there are things that were kind of aligning and they were showing oh, yeah, me that's that my favorite. that right yeah, so you say that favorite. and she alluded to that during that conversation and she gave an example of <laughs> of a plane a plane um landing a huge plane landing which is that huge decision it just does not just rely on one little light on the fl- it rel- there are lots of lights because this is a huge plane and it carries a lot of people there are a lot of consequences for it to, if it lands wrong right so there are a lot of lights that are guiding it right and I like what she said that like, we can ask God to give us those confirmations either through the people the you've got through prayer through those signs that are like yeah this is this is the right thing to do and he does so i don't remember hearing the plane metaphor mm. i don't know if that i mean i get the metaphor but mm. i don't know if that's if, if that resonates as, as well as something else might but mm. um there was something that she said about not trading that 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 gift right the one where you're it doesn't matter anything that you feel god is asking you to do even if it's something really hard like that you know what if that had been my last 20 bucks but i had a full tank of fuel because i had just filling up would i still have given it to the guy at the gas station i would like to think that i would because i felt it in my jellies that that was the Holy Spirit. That was God telling me, do this. And understand why. And see that that could have been you one day. And I helped you out. So now I'm going to help this guy out, but I'm going to use you. And there's something very, very special in that. Hmm. It makes you feel really small, but it it makes God seem really big and that comes off as a really good thing Mm -hmm. to know that whatever god asks you to do you'll do and you'll be better for it and she said something very similar to that and it it rang pretty true because we want that love and that assures you that you have it and then you'll do anything. It's very important. Yeah, yeah. It's it was a great fasting day. I feel like I feel like there was a lot of things that got taught me in between those lessons as well. Just like I told you, being able to apologize to Andrew when I messed up, you know and did not follow the, the rules at school and after power i called him i was like hey i'm sorry i shouldn't have just went in the short line i should have gone around right and so before i went there i was thinking what am i afraid of because i felt like it's like oh i was dreading having that conversation and what am i afraid of, of him seeing that i'm i'm fallible that I'm, i can make mistakes I mean, is that more valuable than him notice learning that he can he can you know correct and take responsibility? That's more valuable, right? Oh, oh, oh absolutely. I'm, right. Another lesson that was kind of, was very apparent to me is how easy the devil just kind of comes to me with um, guilt, right? Like, oh, I was teaching, telling him about the, the spirit of fear, you know, that's not what he has. And he got emotional because, you know, he's a very emotional kiddo. Oh, yeah, he's emotional. Yeah, so then I felt bad because... Um, he's not related to us. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> I felt bad because, like, okay, oh, my God, I ruined his lunch. But then I was in the car driving, and that that was so loud. And that's how another way to recognize God. He's just so gentle. That was so loud. The guilt was really loud. It was, mm. oh, I'm going to ruin his, the rest of his day. 
oh my god, look at me, I'm not a good, I'm not a good mom, my god, I can't even, you know, oh, let my kid, yeah. it was bad. The whirlwind and it, of doubt. And yeah. Sin. Right. And, and, oh, I'm going to have another kid, this is how I'm going to, that kind, that, see, because I was praying for that, those doubts were like, but then, by God, right? Then yeah. just a calm Holy Spirit tone, just voice to me. It was another like, oh, okay. You you did what you had to do to teach your kid, right? You had to take that opportunity to teach Andrew about the the fear is not who he is. That you know he can't depend on fear and let himself make decisions based on fear and it so it was a completely different conversation mm. and saying you got to be confident in you know those things that you do that uh, parenthood and cuz I, I had prayed about you know my, I'm going to eat with him and just excited about it so it was but I, I recognized that and there is another opportunity something else that happened today it was so loud. The devil was just so loud. And the, the Holy Spirit was just calm. And he was just telling me in a calm manner. So that is, a, that is an indication for me. When something is overly loud. Hmm. Versus the calmness of the conviction and the conversation with the Holy Spirit. Right. You definitely feel it. I, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, my reference for that would be that fire of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's so it's a fire, fire, and you know, even in some smaller things, you still get that fire. Mm -hmm. And in something like that, that I could see where that specific instance, I can relate to something like that, uh, especially in parenting. A little person and having to swallow all of that mm -hmm. those are the hardest lessons to teach a child but they're the best lessons to teach a child I wish I would have gotten taught more lessons like that mm -hmm. uh, my childhood I, I don't know I can't think back at a time and remember seeing a, one of my parents or my main parent do that for me. And you it know was, what? I'm right. <laughs> You're wrong. You're a little tiny being and you'll do what I say. But being a parent and seeing how much strength it takes, or maybe not strength. I mean, it feels like strength, yeah. but it's also letting go of yourself. Oh it's Lord. hard yes. to, Dying it's yourself. so hard to be soft, right? It's super hard to be soft. <laughs> Especially as a man, yeah. but I mean, I, that's what I you did. were going through, yeah. and I had the same thing. What was it yesterday? I had to, or the day before, a couple of days ago, I had to apologize to Andrew mm -hmm. after yeah. the fact, yeah. and it was in this room, yeah. you know. And I just read the situation wrong, and my yeah. blood pressure got the best of me. I, you know, I didn't holler at him or anything like that, but I could tell, like I was disappointed, and and. Not how I spoke to him or anything like that, but just with my read on the situation and how I handled it was wrong. And then that Holy Spirit fire mm. comes up and it's like, <laughs> oh, I've got to make this right. Whatever it takes. I think I apologized to him three times. But the one that I had to get his attention and be like, look, this is what happened. I, I saw this wrong. Mm. I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? And it, in that moment, it feels like, you're talking to an adult or mm -hmm. something. It, it's, but that lesson that he learned from that is the same lesson that you were referring to. That so he can know that he can do that, and he puts it to work. Mm -hmm. So that shows that yeah. it's working. Yeah, uh, and you know another thing that the devil tried to attack me with or to lie to me about was, oh, but. He, you know, what if it's anxiety? You know, his dad has anxiety, so you didn't show him that you understood. And the Holy Spirit telling me, okay, if 
he, he's not due to have anxiety because his dad has anxiety. But even if he did, which way is better to deal with anxiety? Is it saying, no, that's not who I am. I'm going to conquer it or just kind of going into it. So, and again, acknowledging it is fine and understanding right. no, being, being understanding of that. Yes. Right. I mm -hmm. mean, that helps in the yeah, parenting process. No, it helps me. Because being, it's relatable for me, though. Right. And, it, it is. I, it's 100%. Yeah. But you're doing the right thing. You're giving him the tools. The tools. And that's instead the Instead of just the compassion. Alone. Right. He was, he's able to say, that made me feel nervous. I felt nervous to speak in front of people. And he was asking me, so how do the other kids go up there and they mm. remember it? And I was telling him, they probably are feeling afraid. We've seen a lot of kids, because his school has changed to lead, letting the kids lead the powwow, which is what they're trying to do, to yeah. foster, Warriors. Right, yeah, to foster courage and be able to have confidence. So I told, I told him, they probably are afraid too, right? Mm -hmm. But what is courage? Doing something when you're afraid. You know, so that's, that's your moment to practice yeah, and that's one of his it. lessons of the year, right. seems like. To conquer your fear. That's when, that's an opportunity that God is putting in your hands. Like, hey, you can practice this That because it's through practice. you got to make the step, you know. You can feel nervous. I feel nervous when I have to give a training that I feel like my voice is shaking. But I have to And do it probably it. is. <laughs> Not noticeably for most people, but it probably is. It you put it on a recording is. like that. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> no, it is. Yes, it but is. I feel it to where some like I would feel like I'm, I can like I need to drink water. I'm gonna cough a lot or something. But all that is just mm. physiological. Yeah, tight, right? But the thing is, I don't know. The Holy Spirit kept reminding me that I can just let him be succumb to fear like just succumb to fear because i feel fear right i realize yeah. and you know that's where that's definitely where you and i as his parents are working together where we're in one with that because where i would maybe lean more towards just giving a little grace in that time after or after the realization that that's what's going on, whether it's anxiety, things like that. And you pushing for the opposite, you know, it maybe sound a little extreme, but it, it works where we intertwine and then the best comes out of both. Right, and I love giving him grace, especially from knowing what anxiety oh, the best is, right? I I, I want to I want to believe that I they do give grace right, I, but I know that there are times when that's not not natural and or cuddly is not what he needs, especially as a boy right. It's not I I don't want to nurture him to nurture his fears. No, I do not. I want to show him. I understand. I see the fear, but you are you can you are conqueror. You are going to conquer this. You're going going to conquer the fears. And if we're not, and the thing is, and that's another thing that the Holy Spirit brought to my attention today. There are many times that this has happened where I pushed, you know, for him to surpass something, and then he got better at it, and he started saying, "See, I can do it. I can do it." And I asked him if I had just let you you know just okay you're scared you know i don't want to push i don't want to hurt then this would have been another missed opportunity that's a step where you know okay tomorrow is gonna be another day where you have to fight with it just like anything else in the future that he might face knowing that i can face it right now and get it out of the way instead mm. of waiting for tomorrow right so right but the bigger lessons seem to come from a bunch of micro lessons about that right it's mm -hmm. a bunch of battles to win that one war mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's that's what i've seen pretty typical with his yeah. development so squishing ants he literally called me out of 
brushing my hair this morning and i want to show you something i said so can you wait until no it's gonna be gone nowhere so, okay i didn't know what it was so i was brushing my hair following him around he was like where's the end where's the end poor and he was like squish <laughs> mush it's like okay but do you remember when outside the tree instant trying to yeah, climb yeah, a tree yeah, yeah, and yeah. he had ants on it and he was crying and i felt horrible oh my god but i'm telling you i knew he needed to do that and now he he climbed the tree the other day just by himself it's like i'm gonna climb the and tree. proud and of he it did. and he was very proud of oh let me go tell daddy show daddy how mm-hmm. i climbed the tree I but he does not get there just by nature alone and i teach this when he gets there also by you gotta do it you know that's just the reality of life yeah, but it you're not too many of those lessons are you gonna learn by the first just doing it. The first just doing it seems like complete torture for no reason. You come out of it going, "Why did that just happen to me?" Right? Not until you learn the lesson or start learning the lesson do you look back at it and go, "Oh." Okay. Right. That especially, was the, the start of it. Yeah, especially if the person teaching you the lesson is not someone you have a bond with. That is the indicator. Because mm. if, and that's something I've seen with parents that I work with a lot, if you're teaching a lesson to a kid who's not connected to you, it always comes out as, like, they're trying to kill me, basically, right? And there is no... It does. Right, it marks you it wrong. Does. But a parent, it's traumatizing. Right. For but sure. The same lesson, the same way could be taught to a different kid who has a connection with that person. Or that same kid goes to a coach that they have a connection with. The same coach teaches him the same thing the same way. Yeah, that makes a lot of difference sometimes. And then, yeah. I've he, seen that work out before. Right. You try to teach someone something and they look at you like you're crazy. And then they go to the very next person that randomly tells them the same thing and they go oh thank you thank you and then just accept it Mm -hmm. and they're so grateful for it right they might have even forgotten that you tried to help them learn that and just completely forget about it come and tell you that they learned this thing or have a completely uh, different perspective i was teaching you that Mm -hmm. or the different perspective for how you were teaching them like oh you were yelling more than he was or yeah you check. Were doing this. i mean that's actually really good there that that is a great lesson that proves the the way of thinking that says god works in mysterious ways and he'll work through anybody just like he worked through me mm-hmm. to get help that guy out at the gas station mm-hmm. you know through my trial help that guy instead of just helping that guy through his own way so each individual person teaches someone else we all have a Mm -hmm. a individual purpose for all these different avenues Mm -hmm. that's why when you think about someone that um let's say someone that is on their deathbed and they're contemplating giving up and someone comes along and they're like hey you know you got a lot to live for You know, you have a purpose. What's my purpose? I'm just going to die. And then the person comes out of it and then they just, it might be something so small like that at the gas station that seems inconsistent or not inconsistent, seems, seems like such a minuscule little thing that you might not even remember it. How many things have we done in our life that we don't even remember doing? that might have saved someone's life or brought someone to Christ or something even smaller that was just a butterfly effect of a cascade of things that ended up being some great thing or it's all just little things. So the person that you know decides not to kill themselves or decides not to die and then goes and they may never see that purpose, mm. especially if they're not looking for it. But God works through everybody to do little things, medium things, big mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. And you may never know. You may know. Right. Uh, yeah. You, and I was thinking if we could 
see the guy you know that they encounter that you had encountered this morning if we could see where he is now what he's thinking about, what he's talking about what he's talking to his kids and his wives and kids about you know meeting jesus because he, he you could have been the person that jesus that he needed to meet that he was probably praying for a miracle and that was the miracle and now he believes in christ because of that so my it, inner little <laughs> doubt guys and they're like no he would never use a guy like me right never <laughs> yeah. I'm not even close to being Jesus, right? None of us are, so it's one of those things. It's like I'm going to die. I'm going to try to to carry my cross, but my cross is also self doubt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's. I was thinking. It's a good point, though. Yeah, I was thinking. Uh, I know I'm getting kind of tired, but I was thinking about the the connection thing that we're saying that you know the more you're connected it's not even about sometimes not about the lesson that you the the person learned in the moment it's how they recover from feeling like that right so the there are two spectrum to that one person goes through that moment they're crying they're hurt they're you know feeling all the feelings in the world and they go to their room, they calm down, they come back and you're, you're hugging, you're, you know, recovering basically, right? Mm. And the other person has the same experience but goes to their room and doesn't come out and just does not recover from that until something else happens, right? It reminds me of how God works. So if, well, has worked in my life at least. Before, when I was very religious, I would think, okay, God is going to be disappointed in me. So I didn't have a relationship, a good relationship with God. So I felt like, okay, if he punishes me, or well, not well, punishes me, God is going to punish me, that means I can't come back, so I have to always do good, otherwise, you know, I can't come back and things like that. But having a relationship with God helps you, like, okay, I'm messed up, I can apologize, and I know there is, the door is always open. Just apologize and move on, you know, come back, you still feel the same love, you, the love has not gone down, you, I mean, same love, same God. Right. Yeah, so the, I don't think a lot of people have that. I don't think a lot of people... I don't either. Right. They know that, okay, I messed up. I'm going to come back. I'm going to, you know, apologize. And the same love is going to be there. You think, oh, messed up. Oh, oh my God, look at me. He's going to be disappointed at me, right? So that relationship needs to be there for recovery to be possible. Right? So, mm. That's a good note to end on. Scoots and toots. What's your sign out gonna be? Scoots and toots. Scoots? Toots. No! <laughs> you said it. Scoots and toots. <laughs>